And we're back with another plugin versus hardware. Today we're going to compare the Master Bus processor by Rupert Neve Designs to the Master Bus processor by Rupert Neve Designs. Right. All right, let me explain. For today's plugin versus hardware, we are going to use a service called Access Analog. And Access Analog allows us to connect to hardware gear in another studio on the other side of the world. How that works, I'll show you later. But for now, you need to stay tuned because later on in the video, I am actually sharing my own personal coupon code with you guys. So you can actually take the Masterbus processor for a spin, for free. That's on me. Every one of you gets to try the master bus processor. Just put it on my tab. All right, so how does Access Analog work? So Access Analog comes with this plugin over here. That's called the Analog Matrix. And that just works as any other plugin. You can just load it up into your DAW. And then once you've connected to their server with all of their gear, you can right click over here to see what they've got. So they've got SSL, Gcomp, LA2A, 33609, Variable Mu, 1176. They've got all of this stuff, limiters, equalizers, multifunction, hey, SSL Fusion, and the master bus processor we're going to use today. Dual mono, Pultex, distressors, all of that gear that you'd normally need to rent a studio like this one for you can now get in the cloud. You can just pull up the plugin and you can choose any of these hardware units to just slap on your vocal or your kick or your master bus or wherever you need it. And you can just print it, go on with your day. You do not have to deal with maintenance or have patch base or have all of this crazy gear taking up all of this space. And you can just go on with your day and work in the box from there. Okay, so in a second, when you've got my coupon code and you're trying the analog matrix for yourself, you might wanna jump into the master bus processor directly. But I would recommend to grab a couple of the free units to start off with and just get a feel of access analog and how it works and get your buffer size and your transmit format and all of the other stuff I'm going to show you in a second because it's just nicer to get a feel of the analog matrix plugin before you're going to spend actual credits because when you start off you might need to optimize the buffer and the transmit format settings to get the smoothest connection to their server so I would recommend starting off with the highest buffer setting. And as a transmit format, I would recommend starting all the way at the bottom and then work your way up from there until you can maybe get to 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. Among the free stuff, there is a The King compressor or the Iron Age Audio Works LH95. But today we're here for the Master Bus Processor by Rupert Neve Designs. Before we start running audio through it, let's see what features the Master Bus Processor's got. So it has a compressor, a limiter, it has a texture control, and it has an SFE section. This thing can do a lot, and I will only be scratching the surface of what features it has got. But let's quickly run through most of them. So we've got a makeup gain over here. And we've got the threshold to the compressor, of course. We've got the attack and the release, fairly standard. Then we've got an RMS and peak switch that switches it between RMS and peak mode. We've got feed forward and feed back, which are different styles of compression. We've got a blend knob, so that's a mix knob for the compression. We've got a sidechain filter of 125 hertz. We've got a sidechain insert because there's actually an insert point on the back. So I could, let's say, plug in the manly massive passive as a sidechain for this compressor. So I could EQ the sidechain with the massive passive and then hit sidechain insert and that would function as my sidechain. We've got red silk and blue silk and that is amazing saturation. The limiter over here, which is really nice. And then we've got a ratio control. It goes from one to one, which is nothing, to 40 to one. I don't know if I would ever use it, but that is more limiting if you need 
two limiting stages kind of then we've got bypass all and channel a master link you see if i unlink it then these lights come on but i almost always have it as channel a as the master and then you dial in all the settings over here and these just follow then we've got the sfe section over here and the best way to describe that is as a mid side eq you've got the depth control which is the mid so everything that is in mono and then width and that is the side so everything that is not in mono what it allows you to do is just push up the mids and push up the sides but you can also engage the eqs on those and then it lets you pick four frequency bands low frequency low mids high mids and high frequency and you can adjust the mids and the sides on those alone then you've got the sfe to comp which makes it a mid side compressor so then the depth control is linked to channel a and the width control is linked to channel b so channel a becomes your mid compressor and channel b becomes your side compressor those are all the bells and whistles on the master bus processor let's import some tracks dial in the settings and compare it to the hardware unit over at access analog so I've got a track loaded up called Teugels by Linde Schöne. It just released and I'm going to play the hook. It's the print track, so it's not limited. It's not the master. It's the final print that I have sent to mastering. And I'm going to dial in the portico as if I would be mastering it myself. And then once I've got this hardware unit in front of me set how I want it, I'm going to copy over those settings into the analog matrix plugin. So let's just play a part of the hook. I'm going to dial in the settings and then we're going to take it from there. <laughs> I think a setting like this could work really well for the track. The compressor is tucking in the kick a bit more. The silk texture is giving a bit of brightness to the vocal to pop out. And then I'm using the depth part of the SFE to give the vocal a bit more push in the low mids. And then the width part of the SFE to give the entire track a bit more width on the high mids. All right, let's see with the analog matrix, we need to add the master bus processor one big difference between these units apart from the color because they've got the black unit they've got the white unit but that doesn't do anything to the sound what does affect the sound is the converters they have the antelope galaxy 64 converters and we're running through the rme adi2 pro fs they're both great converters but they're different so that can cause it to sound a little bit different So as I said earlier, we are using different converters, so it might be that our gain staging is different. So I'm using my ears to get as close as possible to the settings that we've got there, but the output gain and the threshold might change from unit to unit. So right now we're listening to a lossless stream in 44.1 kilohertz, 24 bit coming from the Axis Analog Studio. My session is in 48 kilohertz, so I actually want to be able to get that quality audio in my file later on. So what I'm going to do is use the offline processor to record through the unit over at Axis Analog, and that way I can save it onto my computer and load it back into the session. So I'm going to press ARM, and then I'm going to hit playback and we are going to record this loop. So it says upload audio. That is it. Then we've got 48 kilohertz and we are going to hit process and then it will start processing the audio. Then I can go ahead and save it over here and then we can load it up over here. Okay, so I've got the settings dialed in on the master bus processor in front of me as well as the analog matrix and let's compare and see if they're actually the same. As the LEDs of the gain reduction on the analog matrix are not as precise as the unit I've got in front of me, I have to do more by ear and I think this is about the same setting. So don't shoot me if I'm a tiny bit off. <laughs>
let me know in the comments if you can hear a difference between those two and if so, what you think the differences are. Okay, let's head over to the last file, which is not a complete track that I'm going to master. This is a Rhodes loop, and I love using the Silk section and the SFE section on synths because you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's get rid of the compressor and then only mess with the texture and the SFE section on this loop. Right, let's see if that works in the analog matrix plugin. So let's get rid of the compressor. We've got the blue silk pretty much on three o'clock. And then we're pushing up a lot of this SFE because I love it. Let's get the bells up there with the depth control. And then we're going to push the width control as well. And we're going to put that on the high mid frequencies. Let's process that. Let's see how that compares to the unit over at Axis Analog. All right, those were the comparisons. Please let me know in the comments if you think there is a difference between this hardware unit and the hardware unit over on Axis Analog. If not, that would be amazing. Then we can all just mix in the box, not have any outboard gear. And then when we need a master bus processor, we can just dial it in through the Analog Matrix plugin over at Access Analog. As promised, I've got a coupon code for you which lets you try out the master bus processor for yourself so you can actually see what this thing is all about and what it can do to your tracks. So head over to accessanalog.com, create an account, and over there use the coupon code PORTICO by Thomas to use the master bus processor for yourself. That's it for this episode of Plugin vs Hardware. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment telling me which plugin I should be comparing to what hardware unit, and I'll see if I can get my hands on them. For now, that was it. See you in the next one. Later!